What's up, Nathan? Doctor John, what's up? How are you? I man, I'm <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. I'm not doing a great job at the show so far, but other than that, I'm doing good. What's up? You are good. You, you're doing amazing. It's awesome. <laughs> I want to thank you for taking my call. It's an honor and a privilege. Well, your kindness is an honor and a privilege. So thank you. What's up? I wanted to uh, first ask if you ever moved to South Florida, could we start a punk band together? A hundred percent. I will probably never move to right. South Florida because I've uh, I grew up with hurricanes, and so I just don't dig them. But I do. I'm getting close to needing to start like a full time band, so I'm in. Nice, nice. But dude, we cool. have to slay. We can't just do a punk band that stands there. We have to cause issues. I, I, I uh, well, I seem to do that sometimes. <laughs> you know, in other <laughs> aspects of my life. About. So excellent. All right. So what's up? <laughs> well, uh, I'm married uh, just about ten years now, and um, I wanted to, uh, you know, just call and, and talk to you. And I, um, I feel like I'm a very uh, likable person. And, uh, and that, you know, I don't have too much conflict in my life and my wife doesn't really see me that way. And, uh, you know, it, like, I don't know, I just somehow push her buttons and, and, uh, and, uh, just tend to have an issue with, you know, communicating right and clicking with her in a, in a good way on a consistent basis. And what does um, she not like about you? Um, um, uh, Time management skills. What it be, be, That's a big one. be less less uh, beat around the bush. Are you late to everything? I am much better at not being late to everything. But in my past, it it was kind of the thing that I was known for amongst my friends. But they didn't really, you know, have a problem with it, so it wasn't a big deal. Okay. Um, my wife is very prompt and punctual. Um, Okay. Or at least tries to be as but as best she can. What and, else does she not like about you? When we're not the fact that you don't it's answer questions be... directly and you talk in huge circles around them. <laughs> so what do the things do? Um, she, she just says that we, uh, we, you know, we don't get along uh, for things. There's uh, certain things that she wants, to, you know, have done a certain way, and I want to do them another way. When we got married at first, I I felt like I, you know, would kind of take control and and. Um, just do things, you know, and, and lead as a, as a husband and everything. Um, and, uh, I felt, you know, criticized often and, and that, you know, kind of broke me down in a way I feel. Um, and so now I just, and this, this may be the problem too, but I just kind of just go with whatever she wants to, you know, um, where do you want to go out to dinner? Oh, I don't know, whatever you want, you know, that kind of thing. So, Ooh, yeah, this this has become a pretty gnarly dance. It doesn't end well. <laughs> um, well, I certainly, I cer certainly don't want it to end at all. So I, you know, I, I I hear some of your calls, man, and and the people that you know call in have some serious issues. And I even had reservations of calling because I really, I mean, I want to have a better marriage with my wife, and I think I deserve that, and I think she deserves that. And so that's why I'm calling. But some of the other callers, it's just like, you know, I, I can't compare. I can't hold a candle to, I feel. so. Um, you, you, well, I, it, it, I, I always want to be careful about comparing, comparing tough situations, right? Because sometimes sure. the gift of a really tough, like someone's been having an affair for five years, is that lid is off the, the jar. We have to deal with this now. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I was with somebody at, their uh, four-year-old's funeral this past weekend. And oh, wow. the, the father said something to me that was really profound. He said, most people get the option of avoiding grief for most of their life. We didn't have that choice. And right. I, I was like, man, that's a heavy, profound truth. Most of us can side skirt it and go around it. And uh, we lost our job. But we'll just put on the credit card. They, there's just ways to, to get around it. So sometimes when you listen to the show, it's like, you've been cheating for five years. It's like, oh my gosh, that, that's so bad. But now we're going to deal with it. What I think is a sometimes greater tragedy is the just, this is the way this is going to be. Mm -hmm. 
And it's slowly, without people realizing it, you just get underwater. That's stupid. You're dumb. That's not how we do this. I'm not doing it like that. Well, I don't even care anymore. Where do you want? I don't care. And suddenly, that's the avenue that one person at work sends you a hilarious text and you reply back. That's how that starts, man. Mm. And so, yes, while well, you're right, there's not like some sensational, like my wife was like that fair or I've been doing what cool. That doesn't mean that, like you said, y'all don't deserve something different than this. I want to go back to something you said earlier. When you said I got married and I thought I would just be the leader. Sometimes people confuse leadership with getting whatever I want. Tell me what you mean by I was going to be a leader and it didn't work out that way. I would try to, uh, off the top of my head, for example, if we were, um, you know, going on a vacation or doing a trip, going somewhere, doing something, um, I would kind of tend to just wing it in a way, but that's always worked for me. Um, and then when something kind of backfired, uh, a plan fell through or something like that, it became my fault because it was my, uh, it was your my fault. plan. Yeah. It was your fault. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I, you know, I, I have to accept that. Um, and I, over the years, have tried to avoid uh, putting myself in a situation where I would be at fault, and I'm probably at fault for that too. But well, um, what what is sense? it? So this is a strange conversation. The world is getting to hear mid forties me talk to twenty five year old me because I'm you. Okay. Okay. How old are you now? I'm 42. Okay. Well, I got 20 years of figuring it out, but I'm you 20 years ago, 15 years ago. My wife may say one year ago, but I'm going to go with 15 or 20 years ago. Um, got it. Here's what I hated. I hated plans because I thought plans took the spontaneity and joy and, and opportunity for random adventure out of life. Mm -hmm. And so I would plan a short vacation, a short weekend getaway. I'd make no reservations. I wouldn't even call hotels. I would get off of a plane and say, well, let's go find a cool place to stay. And when we got there, it was always ended up being in a La Quinta because we didn't have reservations. I would be like, let's go see what's a cool like local place. I'm not like, going to go to a touristy place. I'm not that guy. And we'd <laughs> end up at either Arby's or somewhere that it was like a Sprint back to the hotel bathroom. Right? <laughs> and it never worked out. And or I would drive around. I just like to like I like to like go feel the vibe of this town. Well, for my wife, that meant four hours driving through neighborhoods in Southern California or in some wherever in a rental car. That's not a vacation. You see what I'm saying? And so I thought plans meant lack of fun. I thought plans meant Lack of energy, spontaneity, excitement. And then when she would call me on it, I'd get pissed. Because it really, like you mentioned, it exposed the fact that I hadn't planned much anything other than, look at this trip I did. And what I've learned over the last 20 years is my wife felt uncared for and unsafe and unloved because I didn't even bother to get a hotel room. I didn't even bother to be on time for church. And when I looked at it through that lens, it became a powerful agent of transformation for me. Does that ring a bell at all? Yeah. And what it meant for me was like planning things. I can't describe it other than it drives me crazy. <laughs> it, it, it makes me bananas. And so here's how we've handled it in my house. And it's worked beautifully. I tell her, here's what I want this trip to feel like. I want it to be an adventure. I want to have, like, I do want to go fishing. Cool. I want to just chill. We went on a trip, uh, a camping trip with a, a couple of friends of ours uh, a couple years ago. And we all got together in a room. It was like, all right, what do you want? And I was like, I want to sit by a lake and read a book. Probably six books. Awesome. What do you want? I want to go do that. And we all put it on the table and then my wife said, can I please put all this together like a big puzzle? And I was like, amen, sister, go get it. 
Because that part gives her life and joy. Just putting the whole thing together and making an itinerary and making it all work. And so leadership in that sense is not, we're going to do what I say. Leadership is knowing, oh, that's the right person for this particular role. Thank God. There are people with skills and talents I don't have. And dude, I had to face the fact that me being late communicates to the people around me that they do not matter. And I wish that wasn't the case. But that brings me to this. That's been the world y'all have created. And then your way of dealing with that is not heading into it. It's opting out. Wherever you want to eat, I don't care. And then the only way she can connect with you is to just beat you down, right? Mm. That makes, is, is it, any of this ring true? Yeah. At the, at the same time, I would say, you know, if I do make a suggestion, uh, you know, for example, where to eat or whatever, she you know, would say, oh, you're just throwing out names of what, you know, what, I, you know, what's available, not what you actually want. And, and and, uh, you know, I would say I would find something to eat any of those. Uh, all of those are good. So, you know, what what works for you, you know? What, I, um, what, what I'm learning I, is that this is this is an overgeneralized statement. So I'm just going to speak about my house and you can take and, and, and leave whatever part of this you want. What my wife really craves from me is me to have an informed opinion that has been informed by actually thinking about and being present with what's happening. So if I know that I have a date tonight, it, I communicate that I care about her and our time together by thinking, what do I actually feel like eating tonight? And then telling her, I've been dreaming about a burger all day. Like, I can't do any pasta because I'll have the gas. So can I please, um, I really am feeling Mexican food tonight. That's what she craves. The food is the byproduct of not being passive. And she can say, I can't do Mexican food tonight already. I can't. What about this? Awesome. But it sounds like your wife is poking you and poking you and poking you. And if she was on the phone with me, I would tell her, quit poking. Like, that's not an effective strategy. It's a terrible strategy. But she's not on the phone. She's trying to get you to care. And I know you're saying like, no, I'm telling her I care by saying I don't care. Like, I really don't. And I think she's trying to let you know that 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 isn't communicating what you think it is. You ever see somebody who, uh, you're, you're in South Florida, you ever seen somebody who is on vacation down there and they're trying to talk to somebody who speaks Spanish and the person says, no hablo inglés, and they just say English louder and slower? Yeah. That's what you're doing. That's what you're both doing to each okay. other, right? Okay. Gotcha. So how do I... How do I, I know, I, like, uh, I can't make her happy. I, 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 I don't think that's anybody's job to make another person happy. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that, but um, I want to be able to facilitate like a good relationship, and and I don't want to. I want to know what you know more directly from her what the, those things are, but at the same time, I don't think I'm going to get a direct answer. I think if you that leadership you were talking about, that initiative, that putting your standing up tall and planning a weekend away where you take her and you say, we're 10 years in now and this is, um, I love you more than life itself and the marriage we've had, I want to put a period at the end of it and I want to build something new. And in this new I communicate to you that I love you, not through only words, but through how I live because my behavior is a language. And I've been late everywhere and I'm loosey-goosey everywhere. And I say, I don't care about things that I actually kind of care about or I don't care about, but I know that that isn't a good way to communicate with you. And I want to be different starting today. What would this look like for both of us? Because here's the deal. I think you're right. She doesn't like her life. And she's trying to either get you to fix it 
or to at least get you to where she can blame you for it. And is that fair? No. But on the other side, you have backed completely out of your marriage because you got tired of getting poked. And then you're frustrated that she's reaching so far to poke. It's the only way she knows how to connect with you. It's the only way you'll get up and actually fix the thing or decide the thing or whatever the thing. And I think it's just completely control alt deleting the communication, how we do this. Can it be done? Yes, because it happened in my, in my house. It had to start with, and I've talked about this a bunch, I, I, I had to start with how do we want this home to feel like? When you walk in from work and she's there, how do you want this place to feel like? And then what must be true for those feelings to, to come to fruition? And if you say, I want to come in, I want you to actually be happy that I walked in the door, then she's going to say, okay, then I need to know when you're going to be here and you have to actually show up on time. And we have to have met on Friday, the weekend before Saturday and talked about what the menu is for the week. I need you to help with childcare. I need you to see what I'm saying. It's about plugging in. Yeah. What, what is planning drive you crazy? Why does that, why does that just haunt you? Being on time, planning, making, looking into the future for things. Why do you hate that? I wouldn't say I hate it. Um, why do you avoid it? At this point, because she takes care of all of it. She's had to, <laughs> to for a honest. decade. Uh, why do you yeah. avoid it? Uh, I do feel like she enjoys a lot of things. So if, if she wants to decide, you know, where we're going on vacations and things like that, you know, we take the kids and all that. And, uh, you know, she gets a lot of enjoyment out of it, finding different places to stay and, and everything. There's theme parks galore up in Orlando and every, sure. everything. So I think that she does enjoy doing all of that. Okay. And, you just said something really important. And I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, you and I could talk for hours. I'll leave you with this one. Okay. Um, there's a great Brene Brown story that she wrote, writes in one of her books, but the crux of it is this. She uses the phrase, her and her husband use it back and forth. And by the way, my wife and I have done this for years now, and it's a magic phrase that cuts through all the nonsense. And it's this. The story I'm making up about you is that you like to plan all of these vacations by yourself and that I ruin these and it drives you crazy when I ruin them. But you enter into that conversation, not with you, you like to do it. Every time I say it, you complain about, that's not it. The story I'm choosing to make up is that you don't want me to help with these vacation plans. And she would probably say the story I'm choosing to make up is you've been telling me for 10 years, you don't care. You've been telling me for 10 years, by being late to everything that doesn't, you know, you could get right. So that phrase, the story I'm choosing to make up is, and maybe I'll have a story. I'm choosing to make up retreat. The stories I'm choosing to make up over the last 10 years is I can't do anything right. We know that's not true, but the story I'm choosing to make up is that you don't like me. The story I'm choosing to make up is that phrase will transform your marriage. If y'all sit down and actually be grown ups and have that hard conversation. Here's the deal. I think you're right. I don't think your marriage is falling apart. I think your marriage is in a thinner space than you think it is. And I think some direct intervention, let's not make the next 10 years, because by the way, we have to choose what it looks like. Let's not make the next 10 years what the last 10 years have been. I want to be different. I want you to be different. I want us to have a different experience here. Let's co-create this together. And that's going to start with you making some plans, be indirect and in saying, I want to take you out because I want you and I to begin to plan on the next 10 years, what that looks like. What's the story you're choosing to make up, man? Start making a list of them. Ask her along with you. It may change everything. 